Hello, my name is Antonio Flores Montoya, and today I'm going to be presenting my joint work um, with Eric Schulte Data Log Disassembly. The first thing, uh, give, let me give you a little bit of motivation on why we want to do this assembly. Uh, in many cases, you, you have a binary and you find a bug or a vulnerability and you want to fix it, but you don't have the source code. The source code is not available. And this could be because the company that created this binary doesn't exist anymore, or they lost the source code, um, or any other reason like that. One of the few options that you have is you can try to disassemble the binary, devise a patch uh, to fix that vulnerability in the assembly code and reassemble and generate a new binary. Uh, so this assembly is the first step in several technologies such as binary analysis, binary writing, and binary hardening. Uh, but we don't only want to just get the listing of instructions that compose the binary, we want to obtain reassemblable assembly. That is, we want assembly code with cross-references uh, that we can modify and reassemble without breaking it. So this involves two tasks. We, we have instruction boundary identification and symbolization. If you look at a binary, there is the binary doesn't come with boundaries on where instructions start and end. So the first thing that we, want, we have to do is we have to figure out where these boundaries are, where instructions start and where instructions end. And this can be challenging uh, in an architecture such as x64 because instructions have variable sizes and you can have data that interleaves with instructions. The second problem that we tackle is symbolization. Um, for each number in the binary, some of these numbers are going to be uh, referring to addresses of other parts of the binary, whereas others are going to be just literals that have to remain unchanged. For references, um, we want to create labels um, that point to the, correct, the corresponding part of the binary. So if we move uh, and we change things in the binary, we can keep those symbolic references without breaking it. Okay, and the one thing to mention here is that relocation information is not enough for doing symbolization, not even for position independent code. So our approach is to use Datalog. Um, Datalog is a declarative uh, programming language um, and it is gonna be very useful to do both instruction boundary identification and symbolization. For these two things, we wanna be able to combine heuristics easily and the declarative nature of data logs is gonna facilitate this combination. And we want to use simple static analysis to inform our decisions. And data log is very, um, is very good at expressing simple static analysis, in, in particular data flow analysis. And we wanna run this analysis very quickly um, so we can handle very big binaries. And data loss is also good for this because we have now tools that can generate efficient parallel C++ code from data log programs. So how do we do this? Well, to do binary assembly with data log, we have to take the binary and we have to encode the information in the binary into facts. That is the initial knowledge of the binary. So we are going to decode every possible offset in the code sections and see what instruction might be located there. So if you have an instruction that is a move instruction from an immediate to a register, we will generate the following facts. And a fact that says we have an instruction at this address with a size, it's a move instruction and it has these two operands. The first operand is a register, the second operand is an immediate, right? And we're gonna do that for every possible offset. So we obtain a superset of all possible instructions in the code. Um, if at a certain address we fail to uh, decode any instruction, then we're gonna say that address contains an invalid instruction. We generate a predicate saying that address contains an invalid instruction. Once we have these facts, then the analysis and heuristics are expressed as data log rules. And this is an example of a data log rule that, uh, that um, performs a backward traversal that propagates invalid instructions. And the way you read this rule will be the following. If there is an instruction or an address from that must fall to or jump or calls an address to that contains an invalid instruction or no instruction at all, then that instruction and address from is also invalid. 
And as you can see, this is a recursive rule, and this rule is gonna be applied repeatedly, and that's gonna grow the number of invalid instructions until we reach a fixed point. So how does our instruction boundary identification work? Well, the first thing that we do is this backward traversal that I mentioned that propagates invalid instructions. Uh, after that, we're gonna do a forward traversal that is gonna build a superset of all possible basic blocks. This is a hybrid traversal. It's something between linear sweep and recursive traversal. And it's gonna try to use all the possible potential references in, in the data sections and starting, as starting points for the traversal. And that way we can uh, be assured that we are gonna find all possible basic blocks and we have a superset of all possible basic blocks. Once we have this superset of possible basic blocks, these candidate blocks, then we're gonna assign points to these candidate blocks using heuristics. So for example, if a block is an entry point, we're gonna give it many points. If the block uh, address appears in a data section, then we're gonna give it some points. If the, jump, the block is jumped from another block, we're gonna give it points. And finally, we're gonna aggregate those points for all these candidates and we're going to resolve overlaps. This aggregation is an extension of data log, it's not pure data log, uh, but it's included in the, in the data log engine that we use. So if we have two blocks that are overlapping, we will decide which one is the real block and which one is spurious. For symbolization, there is a naive approach that uh, one can use, which is uh, any number that is in the binary address range is considered a symbol. Every number outside that range is considered a literal. And, but this has problems because it is gonna produce both false positives when a literal coincides with the binary address range and false negatives. I'm not gonna discuss false negatives today, uh, but you can take a look at the paper, see how we handle those. For false positives, we wanna reduce the number of false, false positives. Um, and the way we do that is we want to collect additional evidence of how numbers are used, using supporting analysis and heuristics. And then using this additional evidence, we're gonna assign points to the candidates, whether it's a symbol, a symbol minus symbol, a string or other data elements with a different size. And again, as in instruction boundary identification, we are going to aggregate the points to make a decision. So what are the, uh, the analysis that we have? We have a def use analysis that is gonna generate predicates that tell us that a register is defined at some address and then is used at some other address. In this case, the register RDX is defined at the first instruction and then is used in this later compare instruction. We have a register value analysis that relates the value of a register at some address with the value of another register at a different address multiplied by some multiplier plus some displacement. And this can capture simple relationships such as RDX has a constant address, a constant, a constant value, but it can also capture more complex relationships such as RDX can be some value multiplied by 32 plus some constant. And this, this is gonna be useful for our last uh, supporting analysis, which is the data access pattern analysis. The data access pattern analysis is gonna generate predicates that tell us that an address is being accessed with a size and a multiplier from some other address. So in this case, we will conclude that this address at the bottom is accessed with Q word size and with a 32 multiplier. And this is gonna be useful because that tells us that that address probably holds a data element of size Q word, and that give us clues of whether that can be a pointer or not. In this case, Q word is more likely to be a pointer given that X64 has eight bit, eight, eight byte pointers. So with this supporting analysis, we, we, have, we, we use them to enhance, uh, enhance our confidence of whether a candidate in a data section is a pointer or not, or some other element or not. So if a candidate pointer uh, is pointing to an instruction beginning that is positive evidence, if it matches a data access that is also positive evidence, but if it conflicts, if it overlaps with some data access that is negative evidence. And again, we are gonna assign those points, as, um, we're gonna aggregate them and reach a final decision. We did an experimental evaluation. Uh, our tool did this system support X64 Linux of binaries. Uh, so we uh, test our 
disassembler did disassemble with three benchmark checks, seven compiler versions, including versions of GCC, Clang, and ICC, and six compiler optimization flags, which makes a total of 7,658 binaries. And we compare uh, this disassemble to Rambler, which is a state of the art tool in reassemble disassembly. The results are the following. We did two experiments. In one, we check if we get the correct symbolization information for a binary. In the second one, we disassemble the binary, reassemble it, and run the test on the reassemble binary and, and check that the functionality uh, is there. If it passes all the tests, we say the functionality is correct. In both cases, we um, we get a perfect result for over 99.7% of the binaries. And this is well above the results of Rambler. Just to mention uh, very briefly, um, we also measure the disassembly time of both tools. Uh, the disassembly is in most cases faster than Rambler, in many cases, many times faster than Rambler. Everything below the diagonal line means that this disassembly was faster than, than Rambler in disassembly. So as a conclusion, um, reassemble is, reassemblable disassembly is undecidable. Um, practical solutions, therefore, are gonna benefit from both analysis and heuristics. And data log works for both. We can express analysis concisely, which is less error prone and allows for faster development. Um, we can easily experiment with heuristics expressed as data log rules. Uh, in conclusion, this is awesome. It's faster and it achieves better precision than the state-of-the-art tools. Thank you very much. Now we can go for the questions.